Today we have with us Sergey Dishan, CEO and co-founder at Code Intelligence. Sergey, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, yeah, thanks for inviting me. Great being here. It's, it's my pleasure and honor to host you here. You are co-founder of Code Intelligence, and uh, before interview, we were talking about when was the company created. Uh, you you gave us a quick history. I would like to just revisit that that and tell us a bit about uh, when was the company created. What is specific problem you saw in this industry that you felt nobody is solving, you folks can solve, that led to the creation of this company? Basically, from 2014 to 2017, we've been researchers at the University of Bonn. We were researching in how to scale up security testing, uh, how to make security testing better. And back then, we were using fuzz testing as the main technology around that. Um, And we were also collaborating with some German enterprises. And when using our research techniques to test parts of the enterprise code, we even realized, hey, even without our research, just with the open source uh, tools available already, we find a lot of issues, but no one in the industry wanted to use uh, those kind of tech. And here is basically where we start asking questions. Hey, what's going on? Why is no one using those kind of tools? And then we realized that it's much more about the development process and you have two people, so the security people without domain knowledge, And then you have the developers who have the domain knowledge, know what the software does, but no security expertise. And so uh, to use the modern fuzzing techniques where you use um, uh, the feedback loop or where you use um, the coverage-based feedback, you have to have domain knowledge to set it up and security knowledge. And this is basically where it was born. And then when we founded Code Intelligence, we had the vision, okay, we will be using AI technology and bring those security uh, tools closer to the developers so that a developer without the security background can get pretty decent results. And then we had the second persona, and this is the security people. They get reports, they get what's going on, and they can judge did the developers did uh, do a good job and then give them feedback. But basically, we wanted to enable the developers do the core of the work. So this is how Code Intelligence was born in the beginning. But, you know, when you're talking about security folks don't have domain knowledge and uh, developers, they, are, they don't have expertise in security. That's the whole problem that DevOps, DevSecOps was trying to solve with the whole shift left movement. We like to, uh, like, talk about these terms. But the reality is different. Also, things like security, they are very specialized field. You know, it's not that you can just teach a developer about you. Yes, you can have practices in place. Uh, you know, you can have guardrails, you can have gates. But, you know, these are totally different disciplines. Also, AIML, you know, you need data science, data engineer who knows about these things. So expecting a unicorn, greenhorn developers to know all these technologies is a bit uh, complicated. So what you are seeing in the market, of course, now the company established, you have customer base. Internally, what challenges do you see teams still face despite all the discussion of DevOps, DevSecOps? Yeah, in the end, it is the problem and uh, it goes to any security tool. Exactly that gap that a lot of developers have to do security now. But in the end of the day, uh, the developers working in the product team are paid for shipping new features or shipping new software. And uh, the develop uh, or uh, the security is something which is uh, still thought, even though everyone is saying we do shift left, we test earlier, but the mindsets are often if you have to prioritize your week, this week right now, mostly the product teams, uh, the developers, they will prioritize shipping new features instead of security. And then at the end, closer to a release, uh, they will be thinking about security. And obviously, most of the companies got to a DevOps where they started shipping new features on a daily basis, basically. But still, they kind of say, 
hey, I have to prioritize shipping new features. And this is something where there is tension going on between the security people and the developers. So this is true for any type of company, no matter whether they do shift left or not. Uh, uh, it's still at the end of the day, if you have to prioritize, you, most of the product teams will prioritize shipping. What are your thoughts on the whole evolution of ChatGPT or generative AI? And uh, then let's talk about what kind of AI technologies code intelligence is leveraging. In the end, uh, a generative AI uh, got very, very big uh, based on ChatGPT. Uh, and I mean, uh, this is so in the end, there is some machine learning language models and so on. Um, and those can be applied for, and if, if you take something like GitHub Copilot to generate new code and helping you uh, to create new code. But similar techniques, but mostly focused on finding security issues, have been used for years in static code analysis. So there are a lot of different tools leveraging uh, uh, also machine learning for finding security issues. And I think that most of the companies, at least we talk to, they have already a static code analysis in combination with some AI already enabled. So they use it on a daily basis. And now there comes even more code, and this is coming from GitHub Copilot. So the modern companies also start using GitHub Copilot or similar tools to generate more code. But if you, we are looking at penetration tests, how do pen testers find most of the vulnerabilities? It's not with static code analysis because static code analysis is already used by the developers and they fix a lot of issues and mark some uh, things as false positive. But the penetration testers are typically using dynamic code analysis, um, something, tools like Burp Suite or OWASP Zap. And this is where they find the security issues and then give the report back. So most of the dynamic analysis is not part of the DevOps tool chain. So this is something which comes sporadically in penetration tests or is even done by some other team. And uh, here is where we see a new application of, um, of AI. And I can dive uh, a little bit deeper in a second, unless you have another question here. No, please go uh, so that we can continue the flow. And then I do have other questions, but let's, yeah, let's continue this. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So if we are looking uh, at the dynamic testing, dynamic testing means you have set up your software, the software is running, and then you start attacking it. And most of the dynamic analysis tools are the so-called black box testing technique. So it means you don't know what's going on inside uh, uh, the code base, but basically from outside you are observing a black box and you see that there is a certain behavior and based on that behavior, you find a lot of issues. And as I said, most of the attackers or penetration testers find all the security issues with those kind of tools. And back then, when there was a kind of fuzz testing renaissance, I would say, um, a lot of people were uh, thinking, but how to automate the dynamic analysis even more so that you don't have the human in the loop, so th that you have less security experts. And here is where a lot of people started using genetic algorithms. So basically, you attack a software from outside, but because you were part of the compilation tool chain during the compilation of the code, uh, you could inject markers into the source code. So that means if you give an input to the software, like with an X-ray, you can see what's going on inside the software and what path has been taken. And imagine it, you have a map, you have something like a maze, and then you take the different paths inside that maze. And then because you are seeing what's going on with the genetic algorithms, which is another type of, um, of uh, AI, you can basically trace backwards and see, oh, if I do this, I go into a new path, you run the new input, and then you see you get into another path. You can combine it with a lot of detection algorithms, and this way you basically 
increase your code coverage, test coverage, where you generate more and more inputs with the AI so that you cover almost everything inside that source code. And this was something which was already done. And there are a lot of open source tools. So uh, there is something like OSS Fuzz from Google supporting the different programming languages. And we as Code Intelligence wrote Jazzer and Jazzer.js, which is basically the fuzzing engine for the JavaScript or Java language. And basically doing all that automation. Excellent. Thank you. Can you also talk about, number one, the imports of open source for code intelligence? Now, talking about open source can get complicated when we talk in terms of generative AI because there are so many different components, not as simple as a lab stack. But talk about the importance of the company for the company. And if when it comes to AI, generative AI, LLMs, uh, if you're also relying on some open source technologies there as well. In the end, um, LLMs, uh, and let me clarify a little bit how we use LLMs. So as I said, if you have a specific software running and there is a defined interface, we can attack that interface in a dynamic manner, basically on a running software. But the problem is uh, with dynamic analysis is if you set up a dynamic analysis, you have to have someone, some kind of engineer, who is telling this AI how to attack which um, interface. And this is where the LLMs come in place. So how we use LLM, and this can be done with ChatGPT, or uh, there are also alternatives to uh, 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 ChatGPT, um, where we scan through the source code, based on the source code, how it is, uh, we are using generative AI uh, to find the different unit tests. And from the unit tests, we can auto configure uh, uh, how the dynamic analysis is then attacking the software. And here it's already working with uh, ChatGPT, but right now we are working on a smaller language model, which is specified only to the use case, how to configure um, uh, uh, how to configure uh, dynamic analysis. And this is the part with LLMs. Obviously, you could use a generic approach. You have right now ChatGPT, which can code. It can uh, help you with assistance uh, in a natural language. But if you are using a language model specified for a very specific use case, uh, uh, those will be working better. And here is where we use our custom-made uh, LLMs focusing on the sing single use case. Now, you folks, you know, uh, just announced CI Spark. Talk a bit about what it is uh, and whose problem it's going to solve. And CI Spark is doing exactly that part. As I just explained, there is for a dynamic analysis, you have to have an engineer who's setting up everything. And what does the engineer do? The engineer is looking, okay, I have those different interfaces, I have those different services, and is kind of defining all those interfaces, gives uh, something like an open API definition to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to the software, which is doing the so-called fast testing. And with the CI Spark release, we basically automated a big portions of exactly that work. Because if you have the source code, uh, there is uh, something, a lot of interfaces are already defined inside the code. So yes, you could have an engineer doing that, but you have the code and based on the code, you can take the definitions out of the code, generate the configuration, and then the engineer is only looking is it correct or is something missing? But this way you have an already 15x speed up because you can onboard 15 times more projects, more microservices, more services in the same amount of time. We talked about technology a lot. I want to talk about people or cultural side of it. Of course, we are starting uh, the discussion with the whole DevOps, DevSecOps, all those things, you know, AI ops. What I want to talk about is that when we look at the kind of internal friction that you talked about earlier within teams, uh, how much cultural change uh, is needed at the same time, how tools like CI Spark, because sometimes 
tools can also become a catalyst to bring cultural change because they make things easier for teams. So you don't have to really go to the teams or it doesn't work. Your especially security is infamous for slowing things down or at least stopping things altogether. So talk about the role of culture and the role of you know code intelligence to bring that cultural change. This is a, a, a really good, great question because before we had CI Spark, how it worked, we got a lot of interest from the security people. The security people said, hey, we need this kind of technology. And then when we explained how it works, they realized, okay, we need access to the source code. And what they did is they went to the development teams and tried to introduce this kind of software. And then the development team is, uh, said, hey, but it won't work for us because our software is so complicated. We are so special. And uh, what it created, especially in large uh, software projects, is they were discussing how do we do a POC, how to get it done, and so on. So what CI Spark changed culturally is something, okay, now the same security engineers who previously had to consider the developers to do that, they were able to set up because they had gotten the source code access and they use CI Spark and they have set up the first tests on their own without knowing uh, that code base. And this way, they didn't just get to the developers and try to introduce just a new technology. They went to the development teams already with some results and have shown them how it worked. Um, and this way, uh, the resistance by the developers was lower because, uh, hey, if this person doesn't know our code and did it that easily, hey, uh, it must be also easier for us. And this changed a little bit that uh, the security people have an easier job with the developers because it's not something, hey, you have to first invest time and then you get results and then we discuss what's happening. But this way, they already got the first results even without talking to the engineering as long as they had already access to the repositories. And this is, uh, from my perspective, a really big change because the security people uh, have less resistance uh, in a way compared to other uh, uh, to previous approaches, how you would bring in the dynamic testing. One more thing I want to talk about and I want to go back to the company is that and you talk about your history, your region from the university. Talk a bit about your operations. Are you uh, you you German based company? Are you catering only to the local market or you're looking at the global market? And if you can share some use cases or the kind of companies or industries which are leveraging your technologies? We are focusing on enterprises. So most of, so almost all of our customers come, are large enterprises. Um, and if you would look on our homepage, you would see some uh, companies like Google uh, uh, or Carriot, uh, which is the software factory of Volkswagen or Bowen Planet, which is a software factory of Toyota. So you hear it's already over different uh, continents. So we are uh, operating globally. Um, and most of our clients come from the automotive sector, but our focus is or our technology can be applied uh, virtu so uh, um, um, industry agnostic. So it's all about the technology stack you are using. The reason why we have more automotive customers is because we started with C++ and C++ is mostly used by automotives. And then we later added uh, pro uh, memory safe languages like Java, JavaScript, and so on. And after that, we got uh, the customers from FinTech and uh, cloud providers. So basically, this is uh, how, uh, how uh, we went. And uh, yeah, so we are industry agnostic. What are the trends that you're seeing once again from the enterprise perspective? And where do you see the industry, the market, the ecosystem is heading? You see some resistance in some enterprise companies against the AI because there was the discussion about the copyright issues. But if you are looking where the, uh, the generative AI is developing, uh, I think that Microsoft now announced uh, that they take the liability for uh, the copyright and this way, you already see more and more companies are using uh, generative AI to produce more code. But 
There are studies at the same time which say the code is less secure compared to a human written code. So obviously you need to scale up the same way AI technologies in software testing. So there is no way around that. And if you are a company and you want to remain competitive, you have to invest and to go into that direction because otherwise the others uh, uh, will be faster. And uh, where I see um, the developer's role changing in a way is that the developer will be writing less manual code and uh, use uh, definitely AI techniques. But at the same, t- uh, at the same time, uh, the developer will be using AI to do quality testing, to u- use AI to use security testing. And in the end, uh, the engineering will become more part of that you choose the right tools for the right use cases. And it will be a lot more AI. We will produce more code. We will... Uh, produce more complexity and uh, we need to reduce complexity. This is uh, uh, very, very important in the security. That means you have to understand the different AI approaches, how to use them correctly, how to combine them correctly. Because, hey, if you have a good AI tool in security testing, it can influence how the code is generated. So in a way, it will be all about how you combine the different AI tools. Sergey, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the company. I mean, the great insights about generative AI, AI security, and of course, open source. Thanks for all those insights. And I would love to chat with you again whenever new developments are happening at the company or just to talk about the whole evolution of security and uh, AI. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Pleasure to meet you. 